Welcome to Levy, Finland, 170 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle and a popular ski destination for Finns and other Europeans, despite the fact that in the winter there's only two hours a day of sunlight. It's cold, it's dark, and it's remote. The perfect place for Porsche's Ice Experience Center, a monstrous motorsport facility built on a swampland that's virtually unusable for anything else during the summer months. Porsche has invited me all the way out here to try something totally new, their GT4 e-performance functional concept race car on the ice. And as a kicker, they're gonna let me have a bunch of seat time to get my bearings in a GT4 Club Sport on studded tires. The GT4 e-performance is Porsche's best attempt at a sustainable customer racing series to complement or perhaps even replace the 911 Super Cup. Based on the Cayman GT4 Club Sport, this car has dual electric motors, all-wheel drive, and a 60 kilowatt hour battery that can, in qualifying trim, output 1,000 horsepower. It can lap virtually any track as fast as the current 992 generation cup car, even at just under 3,500 pounds. Light for a sedan, heavy for a sports racer. But the battery also has to last 30 minutes at full racing pace without losing performance, which would, by Porsche's estimate, require 90 kilowatt hours, 50% more than the car holds when fully charged. To make up for the difference, Porsche have installed an 800 kilowatt onboard charger that takes advantage of the fact that race cars generate a lot of energy under braking. In racing trim, the power is dialed back to around 600 horsepower, and the regenerative braking puts enough juice back into the batteries to finish the race. The onboard charger also means that if an 800 kilowatt DC fast charger did exist, the car could be fully charged in about 15 minutes from empty. As it sits, the concept is mainly charged through regular DC fast charging, just like a Taycan. One of the questions I had for Porsche was how do they keep this thing and other electric cars charged way out in the middle of the wilderness here at the Ice Experience? And they said, Matt, we are turbocharging. And I was like, what do you mean? And they go, turbocharging. And this, this is the turbo charger. It is a giant semi-truck of batteries. It's 2.1 megawatts. In case you're wondering what 2.1 megawatts actually is, they tell me that one of their employees here uses just over two megawatts of power in his home for an entire year. So it's a year worth of home power in this trailer. And what that really means is they can DC fast charge at 270 kilowatts, 10 Porsche Taycans, five on each side of the trailer at the same time. Porsche is trying to make electric sports cars not only as fast and consistent as gas cars, but also as fun by giving the driver more control in new ways than ever before. The GT4 e Performance has adjustable brake bias and adjustable power bias in real time using the four shift paddles on the steering wheel. There's a hydraulic handbrake and there's the coolest bit of all, which Porsche has developed only in the last week before I arrived in Finland, the oversteer pedal. You heard that right. You see, when driving all-wheel drive cars on loose surfaces, you need to use your left foot on the brake when powering out of corners to reduce understeer and better point the nose. But in this car, you have two independently controlled electric motors. When you're on the accelerator coming out of a corner and you left foot brake, it doesn't actually brake, but it cuts power to the front motor while overdriving the rear motor, adding more slip angle without reducing speed, a perfect technology to debut on ice. First things first, they strap me into the old school gasoline GT4 Club Sport to get familiarized with ice driving. We did some slaloming, some Scandinavian flicks, some drifts, some big continuous donuts, and some transitions to get used to the way the tires gripped on the ice with the studs. 
Then we tried the same thing in the e-performance, which was a whole other world. There was a lot to think about, all new controls, a yoke style wheel, which is awful for oversteer, and the all wheel drive technique is completely different to how you would do rear drive on a loose surface. The lack of a factory climate control meant the windows got fogged up and it was impossible to see with the white on white track and the gray sky. Let's just call the whole thing suboptimal. But it was fast. Far too fast for a first timer on a loose surface where anything above about 400 horsepower just turns into wheel spin. The warm ups didn't exactly build a lot of confidence. Then, with one hour of sunlight down and one hour of sunlight to go, we had to stop to charge the car. To bide my time and completely deprogram my brain in the process, I got to run the full rally stage in the GT4 Club Sport, possibly the best 20 minutes of driving I've ever had. Let me tell you guys something right now. Even if this is it, even if I don't get to drive the electric GT4 E Performance, still one of the best days of driving ever. GT4 Club Sport on studded tires in Finland on the ice track. It is tricky to see. Everything is kind of white on white, but I am having the best time right now. I love rear wheel drive rally car, particularly on the right tires, particularly on the right surface, and what a treat. The GT4 Club Sport 425 horsepower, very light, super responsive, TDK gearbox. I don't know if you can see how tricky it is to see the uh, white on white land, but woo! I have set it up so that when I left foot brake, just a hint for rear brake, then front, making it slightly better to scan the flick and initiate that slide brake. I mean, come on! It's light for two hours a day here. And I'm using every minute of it. Just fantastic. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Woo! Now you can only really start to see where you're going once you've worn some tracks into the snow. Flick, go, go. But I love the rear drive rally because I can just modulate that back end on the power in a way that I can't do with an all-wheel drive car. As we'll see with the all-wheel drive e-performance after this. But even if this was it, what a day, what a day of work. I love Finland. All this and I had reindeer for lunch? Oh yeah, baby. Well now let's see if I can do it in an all-wheel drive car. By the time I got to have a go on camera in the GT4 E performance, it was 3 p.m. and fully dark. They put me on an ice circuit I've never seen before and said I got three laps total. No pressure or anything. This thing is so gnarly. It's so much different than any other Porsche race car I've driven. You really have to be very patient with the steering. Straight head gears, it sounds just 
looks like a cup car. Get out of the baby. And then I can left foot brake to power oversteer just the rear motor. Okay, okay, okay. And then out of nowhere. Snowbank. Fortunately, because it never gets above freezing here, the snowbanks are soft and hitting one won't damage the car, although you do need a tow out, which is kind of embarrassing. So that's how quick things can go wrong in this car. These straight cut gears are crazy loud. And what's interesting is in a cup car, they're also super loud. You can't hear the engine in that thing either. So the experience is oddly similar. I gotta stop counter steering. Okay. Well, I was finally starting to get it a bit there. Still using a little too much of the handbrake but I'm coming from such a rear wheel drive mindset that I really need that handbrake to get this all wheel drive car rotated. I feel like with some training, I would get better at that. Am I leaving here an all wheel drive convert? Probably not. But there's no question that as a concept, this thing does work. It goes really fast, it gets the power down, and with the tricky software they've got going that allows you to use the left foot brake to overdrive the rear wheels compared to the front, that is a really interesting thing that shows you how you can make it fun to control an electric powertrain on an icy track. Look, honestly, while I appreciate the drive, this isn't enough seat time in a very high pressure, stressful and unfamiliar environment to do this and actually look good on video. It just isn't. But the car is promising. It's very fast. It makes the same straight cut sounds you get from the cup car. It looks great. And in its own way, it's fun and offers a lot of control, sometimes in ways that would be impossible in a gasoline car. It may not be for everyone, but the future of electric GT racing is brighter than I would have thought a year ago. Now, can I have one more go in the GT4 Club Sport? <laughs>